Mark Rogers TV getting you set for the college football weekend three and much like it was for the Big Ten last weekend, many considering this judgment weekend for the Big 12. So let's uh, knock it out here for the Big 12 and see what's at stake for this conference in trying to get somebody or multiple teams set up to make a run at the college football playoffs. So up until this time, there have been three matchups for the Big 12 against Power 5 conference teams, or we're going to include Notre Dame and also BYU. BYU is a top 25 team right now. They're playing Houston right now. We expect the Cougars to win and maintain their status in the top 25. So right now, Oklahoma State played rather well against Florida State, lost that game against the current number one team, Oklahoma State losing to Florida State, but again, showing themselves uh, very well on national television. Then you had the West Virginia showing against Alabama, and again, a heavy underdog. The Mountaineers stayed in the game until midway through the fourth quarter, losing by 10. Now the other showing by the Big 12, not so good. Texas at home against BYU, a one-point underdog, lost by 34. So Texas, we will see how the Longhorns play in Big 12 competition, but considering their one non-conference game to date against BYU, it doesn't bode well for the Longhorns in or out of conference. Okay, let's run it down from what we believe to be the most important matchup to the least important matchup for the Big 12 Conference this weekend. So play with me here with Tennessee and Oklahoma. If the Sooners win as expected, and not in just annihilation fashion, 55-3, to but win by 17, 21 points, something in that range, this is not a very important win for the Big 12. Tennessee despite the two fairly impressive wins to open the season over Arkansas State and Utah State, Tennessee is most, most likely about the 10th best team in the SEC. So Oklahoma right now considered the best team in the Big 12. Knocking off Tennessee at home by two or three touchdowns would not be anything of significance for the Big 12. But that would be significant for knocking off the Big 12 and putting a damper on this weekend if Tennessee somehow pulled off the upset or if Oklahoma barely scratched out a victory, then Tennessee went back to the SEC and went 3-5 and five or 2-6 and six in the SEC as expected. So it's Tennessee, Oklahoma. Tennessee, again, about the 10th best team in the SEC taking on Oklahoma, who right now is considered the best team in this Big 12 conference. UCLA taking on Texas. So UCLA has not been impressive in wins against Virginia and Memphis by 8 and 7 points. UCLA is still a top 12 team in the country, taking on Texas uh, at Cowboys Stadium. The Longhorns uh, atrocious last week with Tyrone Swoops at quarterback against BYU, getting slammed and rushed on on defense, not looking very motivated. The program, the team right now is a mess, losing 41-7. to All right, so this game, again, if Texas loses, and if they lose by 10 to 20 points, this is not significant. If UCLA continues on to, to, to play as one of the top four teams in the Pac-12, as they're currently uh, considered to be, along with Oregon, Stanford, and USC, one of the four best teams in the probable number two conference in college football, well, Texas losing this game by 10 or 20 is not going to be significant for the Big 12. It's going to be significant if Texas pulls off a remarkable upset. That would be huge for the Big 12, of course, and especially if UCLA goes on to a 9-3 and or 10-2 and campaign, or if Texas gets annihilated once again and then has a good Big 12 campaign. So if Texas can't show that they're any good against anyone outside of the Big 12, lose by 34 to BYU, say they lose by four touchdowns to UCLA, then let's say they go 6-3 and in the Big 12, then that's not good for the conference. So, again, not significant UCLA-Texas if it's a 10 or 15-point UCLA win and the two teams go on to do what we consider them to be. Again, it's UCLA, one of the two or three or four best teams in the Pac-12 taking on Texas, who right now looks like about the seventh or eighth best team in the Big 12. But the jury's out on Texas, no doubt about it. West Virginia and Maryland. Maryland out of the Big 10 now, so... 
Uh, this had an Eastern feel at one point. If you're a longtime college football fan, West Virginia, of course, moving to the Big East at one point, and Maryland, uh, a longtime standing member of the ACC. And this has been a rivalry. Now it's kind of strange to consider this Big Ten versus Big Twelve. West Virginia, despite the loss on opening night against Alabama, showed themselves well, 33-23, threw for 365 yards. Clint Trickett could have thrown for 500 if he wouldn't have had a couple dropped balls by wide receivers on what would have been big play. So West Virginia, Maryland, jury's out on Maryland. They've not played anybody of significance yet. They beat South Florida by a touchdown last week. But what is expected out of Maryland is to be about the ninth or 10th best team in the Big Ten, and a bad Big Ten at this point. So ninth or best, 10th best team. So West Virginia, despite being a three-point underdog at Maryland, could uh, could win this game. Certainly, this is a toss-up game, and West Virginia has played better football to date than Maryland. So they go to Maryland. This could be a decent win for the Big 12, again, if Maryland goes on and, and performs pretty well in the Big Ten. All right, then we've got Arkansas and Texas Tech. And again, we've got to consider who these teams are supposed to be based on last season and based on projections for this season. So at this point, Texas Tech, Arkansas. This needs to be a win for the Big 12 if these teams go on to do what's expected. Arkansas is improved, but still only about the 10th or 11th best team in the SEC. 0-8 in the SEC last season. Arguably the worst team in the SEC last season could be the same this year. Texas Tech's only a two-point favorite uh, in basically a home game. It is a home game in Lubbock. Texas Tech, just a two-point favorite against Arkansas. Texas Tech has looked bad in barely getting by UTEP in Central Arkansas. So the Big 12's got to win this game. Uh, their matchups with the SEC are lopsided affairs. It's not Oklahoma LSU or Oklahoma Auburn. It's not Baylor taking on Georgia. It's not Texas Tech taking on um, somebody like a Tennessee or Ole Miss. Uh, Texas Tech, again, expects to be a 7 or 8 win football team getting to a decent bowl game as they have uh, in recent years and certainly last year under Cliff Kingsbury. Arkansas, one of the bottom feeders in the SEC. So Texas Tech, if this is the struggle, again, not going to look good for the Big 12 and going to look good for the SEC and trying to get two spots in the college football playoff if you can follow my logic there. Again, top-tier Big 12 teams taking on mid to low SEC teams, and in Texas Tech's case, a mid-tier Big 12 taking on a low, low ranked team in the SEC if the season plays out as expected. Then we've got Iowa, Iowa State. Iowa's been the more dominant program by far, but for some reason, they struggle in state with Iowa State, so there's an opportunity here for the Big 12. Iowa struggled in starting off at 2-0, but the Hawkeyes are still 2-0, and I expect them to contend in the Big uh, 10 Western Division. So Iowa State's got an opportunity here. They're about a 10-point underdog at Iowa. Expect this to be a close game. Hawkeyes, definitely at this point, a better football team. But Iowa State, after coming off uh, a close call against Kansas State. They played rather well against the Wildcats. And the Wildcats, at this point, you would have to consider to be a little bit better than Iowa. This could be uh, a big victory for the Big 12. If, if one of their bottom teams beats a better team in the Big 10, that could be a feather in their cap for down the line. Iowa State taking on Iowa. Hawkeyes about the fifth best team in the Big 10. Iowa State down the rung in the Big 12. And if they lose, unless Iowa State loses 37 to nothing, which they most likely won't, they lose by a touchdown or 10 points, no big deal. Minnesota TCU. TCU has to win this game for the Big 12. Minnesota's without its quarterback, Widener, in this game. Um, not supposed to be performing in this game against TCU. Minnesota uh, did have a, a nice season last year in the Big 10 uh, with eight victories, but only four and four in the conference. And Minnesota's just, uh, they've done well. Jerry Kill's done well to, to build a football program to this point. But TCU has everything going for it. 16-point favorite. No Minnesota quarterback starting quarterback in the lineup. TCU's got to win this football game against Minnesota. This would be a knock on the Big 12 again. If they lose this, then TCU goes on to have 
uh, a big season in the Big 12, and Minnesota goes on to be what we expect them to be in the Big 10. They were 4-4 four and four last year, probably about the same, maybe even 3-5 and five in the Big 10 this year. All right, then we've got Kansas taking on Duke. Uh, no big deal for the Big 12. Kansas is the worst team in the conference, and if they somehow hang with Duke and Duke does anything close to what it did in winning an ACC division uh, championship last year, then that's just this is just icing on the cake for the Big 12. If Kansas does anything at Duke, expect the Dukies to win this game by about 20 points. Baylor and Buffalo. Okay, this is an opportunity missed for the Big 12. Baylor plays no one. They've played Northwestern State and they've played... Uh, SMU and they've crushed both of them. Now they've got Buffalo. So those are the three non-conference games for Baylor. And if you'd like to check out our Baylor schedule post in which we completely rip the Bears, there it is. This program has arrived not to the elite of college football, but it's a top 15 or 20 program. And they're playing Buffalo, SMU, and Northwestern State. They've got to play somebody legitimate out of conference. This will hurt the Big 12. If the Big 12 does not perform well out of conference and Baylor emerges as the Big 12 champion and all they have to show is defeating uh, a marginal Big 12, maybe Oklahoma and a bunch of uh, eight and four teams like Oklahoma State and Kansas State, and then they didn't beat anyone non-conference, they didn't play anyone non-conference, Buffalo, Northwestern State, and SMU, that would not be a good scenario for the Big 12. Likewise, even though Oklahoma scheduled Tennessee, the other two games, Tulsa and Louisiana Tech, hold them back. And if Tennessee, again, goes 2-6, and 3-5 and five in the SEC, Oklahoma's got nothing to show non-conference. All right, then finally, we've got an Oklahoma State game against Texas San Antonio. San Antonio, they ripped Houston a couple weeks ago, 27-7. Oklahoma State, again, probably the best loss in the country right now in losing to Florida State 37 to 31. So keep in mind, this is a big week for the Big 12, but they really have nothing to lose in these matchups with Texas, UCLA, and also Iowa, Iowa State, Kansas, and Duke. Where they could tumble would be Oklahoma losing to Tennessee, of course, and uh, the game that we've got, uh, that that's pretty much the one that could really hurt them more than anything, and to a much lesser degree, TCU shouldn't lose to Minnesota, and Texas Tech as a fourth or fifth best team, maybe sixth best team in the Big 12, has got to beat Arkansas. That's only a two-point game, according to Vegas. Would love to hear your thoughts on the Big 12, currently 0-3 against the Power 5 and BYU, and how that shapes up for this weekend, right here on Mark Rogers TV.